Woodwork Geek back here again. Nice little project this one. A set of coasters to go with those ingrain boards. Of course, the coasters are also in ingrain. These are made up from sapili, maple and walnut. The sapili is the rectangles, the thin strips is the maple and the corners are walnut. After getting machine dimension timber, I then resaw that timber to create the thin strips on the bandsaw and the planer. So I used the planer to get a flat um, edge and then use that flat edge against the fence on the bandsaw to create those strips. I made these strips just under five millimeters thick and then I run them through the drum sander to get a nice even uniform finish across the whole surface and you can, uh, surface. You can see here just clearing up the um, sandpaper drum just to make sure that that finish is as good as possible. Once you've got all of the surfaces flat parallel and ready to go it's time to then test them up against the sapili to make the sandwich for the kind of white edges on the um, sapili center so i get three of those strips one cut in half and that makes the two sides and the two end pieces for that um, in hindsight here i just used the clamps on the on the board directly if i did this again i would use some kind of calls or um, a wider piece of wood to apply more clamping pressure across the whole surface because I did have one edge that wasn't quite perfect. Um, as always, the learning continues. After you've got the um, sandwich all glued up, I then just run it quickly through the drum sander and scrape off the bits of wood before that. And then I run the two edges through the planer to create um, kind of flat square PAR um, sandwich so that I can then um, use that for the kind of long width of the coaster. <clears throat> Once I've got that I cut the piece in half and then of the halves I then cut those in half so that I create the two um, side pieces for the coaster and as you can see in a little bit I made a bit of a mistake here and I made them way too thick so you can see there um, a lot of head scratching and um, pondering and I go back to the bandsaw to then re-saw one half of those again because the, the side pieces are quarters not halves so I'm always learning and then take those pieces to the drum sander and just clean them up on the drum sander so that they're all nice and perfect surfaces for the glue up on the sandwich um, after I've got those machined the next piece of work is to start on the corners. So you can see here, I've just um, dimensioned some um, walnut for the two edges there, you can see. Um, and I ended up making two when I needed four. So um, I had to do the whole thing over again um, to create the four. Once you've got all of those pieces, it's glue time again. So I just glue all the surfaces, clamp them up. Um, I think if I did this again, I'd probably do the top and bottom pieces separate and then glue the top and bottom to the center um, just to get better um, kind of clamping pressure all around it turned into a bit of a faff to try and get that all in one go after the glue's dried it's sand off the edges trim it up and then square off the ends so that you have a nice perfect finish uh, i ended up about a quarter of the way through this making a, a jig for cutting these with a zero clearance um, backstop to it to kind of help with a bit of breakout but as you can see here you can just put them on the miter saw and cut them through they come out good for sawn timber so after you've done all the cutting it's then my favorite job sanding and, and there was quite a chunk of sanding with these um, as all things but the more effort you put in with the sanding the better the finish tends to be um, so because that chop saw has got a brand new blade or very new blade on it I didn't have an awful lot of cleaning up to do <clears throat> when I cut through the blank I tried to keep the saw going through in one motion rather than um, lifting and going back down where you can get kind of blade marks across the flat surface um, those blade marks take a lot more cleaning up than just one continuous kind of press through the miter saw. Um, obviously, you can't be too Neanderthal with it because it will it will bite and try and kick back. But 
um, a little bit goes a long way. After you flatten the surface, it's then time to do the edges. So I just use the disc um, sander here and just square up each of those edges, um, making sure to use the kind of rubber adhesive to clean up that often. Here I'm doing a water pop just to get that kind of grain raised so that I can knock it back again. Um, after I've got all of the grain raised, I then make up this nifty little jig for soldering. Um, so you can see there, it kind of creates a central position for putting the um, soldering iron with the branding um, logo on it, dead square in the center for each and every coaster. After you've done all of that, it's time to oil. Um, so I didn't show you all of the sand in here, but I went through 80, 100 to 150 um, grit um, paper. So they're, they're pretty smooth. They're not quite as smooth as I do the boards, but um, it's a coaster. It's not going to um, need too much. Um, and then Osmo's top oil, um, my favourite finish. Um, so I, out of a blank that was kind of 50 centimetres long, I got in the region of 25 coasters out of it um, so I'm pretty pleased I think if I did it again I would try and make it longer um, so that you get a few more coasters out of it because the, the time in the glue in the machining is where it kind of consumes all of that time um, so obviously the more you can do in one operation the, the faster it will get um, I'd also do the separate glue ups to get a slightly better glue joint <clears throat> but other than that I'm really pleased with how they come out Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you like it, subscribe. If there's something different you want me to make, then let me know. Uh, always up for trying a new project. Thanks for joining me. Woodwork Geek out.